back in October 2020, I made a video called What Amplifier? And the idea behind that video was to help people choose the right kind of amplifier for their own situation. And I did that by explaining the different types of amplifier and a little bit about how they work. But today I want to develop that topic a bit further and consider what could be the perfect power amplifier? What criteria would it need? And I believe that there is a power amplifier module that has been invented that could form the basis of something becoming really the generic perfect amplifier in the future. But first of all, let's get some context to this because we all know that perfection doesn't exist, right? But let's just for a mad moment imagine that there is someone, it could be you, that has the perfect system for them, that maybe they've owned it for more than three years without changing any components or even without the desire or need to change a component. Maybe when they come home, they just stream some music or put on an LP or CD, sit back and listen and enjoy the music without even thinking about the components, how they're working, the bass, the treble, the mid, the tones, the dynamics, the, white, the sound stage, all of these things. Maybe they don't think about those things, they just enjoy the music. And if I or you were to say to them, what would be the perfect power amplifier for you or amplifier for you, the way they would describe it or set about choosing one might be very different from how we imagine. And this is important because imagine if by the simple click of my fingers, I could switch your amplifier, your power amplifier, this is what I'm really focusing on at the moment, into the perfect amplifier. It was doing exactly everything you want. And imagine if via some kind of alien science, I could click my fingers and all power amplifiers, all amplifiers in fact, would sound the same, i.e. perfect. How would that impact the business? Because for something to become ubiquitous across the hi-fi industry, it will obviously impact a business. And what I'm trying to do here is identify future trends and apply them to our current needs. So imagine then with the click of my fingers, we've got every amplifier the same. Would we all go out and buy the cheapest one? For example, would some of us be prepared to pay more for the blue glow of a Macintosh power amplifier or the nice amber glow of the VU meters on a Luxman or the industrial designing look of a Pass Labs or a Sugden SP4, for example? I think we would still be prepared to pay varying amounts for different looks and, should we say, constructions as we would, for example, wristwatches. If you were to go shopping today and I gave you a budget of 250 euros to buy a high quality watch, you could buy, for example, a Seiko Men's Quartz, quite a good one. And the quality of that watch, the strap, the casing, the movement and everything is so good, it would probably last decades. You might even be able to hand it down to your children. On the other hand, for 8,000 euros, or even 20,000 euros, you could go out and buy a Quartz Amiga, the really top of the range, and even more expensive watches than Amiga. The Seiko won't keep any less accurate time. It will be probably just as good, maybe better. It will function, it will do exactly what it wants, but there are people walking on this planet and quite rightly, who wouldn't be seen dead wearing a Seiko for whatever reason, that's their choice. No, they want to spend more money on something that looks nice. And I think we have to accept that sometimes our decision making is not purely based upon specifications or statistics. And there is such a perfect amplifier available in the market today. And that is the Purify Egentact. You may have heard of it. 
Now this amplifier is actually just a module. It's no bigger than a, a cigarette box, if you can remember what size those things were. And yet, if you were to look at the specifications, you would say, this is perfect. For example, the input signal that it receives is amplified and the output is exactly the same as what goes in. I mean, when I say exactly on a scientific basis, it's almost as exact, all right? It's as near as you could ever imagine to getting. The distortion figures are incredibly low, so low that they're basically unmeasurable. The power is sufficient. There's two modules. There's a, one that gives out a power of about 125 watts into 8 ohms and 25 amps. Then the more powerful big brother is about two to 400 watts and 40 amps. Can you imagine delivering 40 amps? So I was curious to hear about this because my colleague AJ in London was talking about it. Lots of people have been. And you can find these modules working in a number of manufacturers' uh, amplifiers like NAD Master Series, for example, and a scattering. So what did I do? I reached out to a guy called Warren Coleman in America, and he runs a company called VTV. And I was talking to him about it, and he very kindly lent me one. And he sent me over, and this is it. I and mean, it's a very simple box. It's a, yeah, it's a good sized box. And in this is the power supply and the amplifier module. And I was talking to Warren about this amplifier and he was saying, well, how are you going to use it? What do you want to do? And we're discussing about the loudspeakers and everything and how I needed a lot of control for the single drive cone, etc., etc. And in the end, he very kindly sent me the Purify, the standard one, with a tube buffer and indeed with um, two op amps. Because there's something you should know about these Purify amplifiers. On their own, they only have about 13 decibels of gain, 12.8 to be exact, which is not enough normally for a power amplifier. And a lot of power amplifiers have what we call buffers inside them. So that brings the voltage up and then brings it up again. And then it goes into what we would really consider the amplifying part of the system. And the Purify is no different in that respect. So even a power amplifier needs a kind of mini pre-amplifier module in it. And so he sent me two op amps, one from Weiss and one from a company called Sparkos. And these op amps sit inside the buffer boards where the tubes are, and they are like mini amplifiers within the pre-amplifier. So giving it that second boost, that the, the three levels, if you like, in total. Now, when I first heard it, I had the Weiss op amp modules in, and I have to say it was astounding really astounding and I drove it with um, my uh, musical fidelity preamplifier the M8 and I tried the different ones I used one from Project and some various other preamplifiers and it really sounded astounding the detail was crystal crystal clear the bass was completely under control it had the Sibelius drive cones absolutely tight doing exactly what they should um, there was plenty of power, it was really dynamic, I mean it was incredible. But, and there is a but, it wasn't necessarily, for me anyway, that pleasant to listen to. If I was in the mixing room, having just done a, a recording, it would be perfect. Because Sometimes when you do a recording, there are little noises and you want to identify exactly what they are and where they are. And listening to a track by Tracy Chapman, there's a track called Mountain of Things. And in that, when it comes to the chorus, she plays a single chord, very simple chord on the acoustic guitar. 
And a lot of amps, you don't notice it at all. But with this amp and the Weiss module, it was really clear. I mean, it came forward. It made me think that there was something happening around two and a half thousand hertz, maybe a little bit higher, that just brought it forward. And that, for post-production work, for studio monitoring, for certain kinds of music, is really, really interesting. It's, it's just fantastic. However, to sit back and relax to and listen to music and maybe even string quartets or violins, because they can sound easily a little bit too harsh, I found it a bit too much. So he suggested that I swap them over for the Sparkos preamps, because he's uh, op amps, because he's been working with Andy from Sparkos for a while now. And so I did that. And, you know, it's a little bit complicated. You know, you obviously have to take the lid off. You have to remove very carefully, pull out the old uh, op amps, the Weiss ones, and then very carefully push the new op amps in. And then you have to measure the voltages to get a zero across the pins. Um, but that's not too difficult. Did that, put them in, and wow, the Sparkos uh, op amps made that difference. It just, I don't know how to say it, it, just made it a little bit more musical, in fact. So here we are. I thought I would just pop the lid of this VTV amplifier. I don't normally do this, but I think it's just so interesting to see that the biggest component here is the power supply, to be honest. These little units here are the Eigentakt Purify modules from Purify. You see this left and right channel and you can see how small they are. They would easily fit in a cigarette packet. And then you've got the two tube buffers and then with this tube preamplifier really which is feeding into it we have the Sparkos op amps two per buffer um, and that is really like the little preamplifier within the preamplifier um, just to bring the voltage up and then up again and then to get a, a decent voltage into the Purify Eigentakt module to get that gain up from 13 um, dB to I guess around 20 and, and more in fact. I was completely intrigued by this power amplifier module, the Purify Eigentakt module that it left me asking myself lots of questions. And some of the people I've been talking to also had questions. So you know, I thought, well, you know what? The best thing to do is to talk to the person who designed it, Bruno Putzes. And uh, he very kindly agreed to come over to my listening room here in Belgium. And we spent, spent a very pleasant Sunday afternoon uh, trying out some of his modules, listening to some of his Mola Mola gear and, uh, and other equipment. And of course, focusing very much on the, on the uh, amplifying modules. And uh, I ended the afternoon by interviewing him. And on the 14th of March, in two weeks' time, we're going to release that interview in its entirety. It is quite technical in places, but I'm just letting you know that you might find that interesting. However, back to here and back to this amplifier, you know what I feel? The Purify module, the Eigentakt module, is really incredible. And I think it's outperforming all the rest of the components. And I believe there's a lot more work that we can do to make a buffer in front of it that is really, really outstanding. And maybe, just maybe, in a few years' time, we will have a power amplifier module with maybe more than one buffer, with just some simple relay switching where you can switch from one buffer to the other. Because I just think it's capable of so much more even though it's technically brilliant now this it's just got something now I don't want you to go out and sell your Sugdens and sell your Parcel Labs and sell your musical fidelities or anything in fact I'm not suggesting for one minute that this needs to replace it for me this just means that we can consider power amplification as a total commodity we can hide this unit away put a trigger on the back of it, hide it away completely. No one needs to see it. I think it can even be smaller than this box, in fact. And we can also 
go back to the old days where we sort of have a control unit, like in the 50s, you just had a control unit because the power amplifiers were ugly and they were uh, dangerous even. Some of them had a sort of a positive chassis, you know, a live chassis. If you touched it, you get electrocuted. So they were hidden away. It's only in recent years, comparatively, that these power amplifiers have come on show. I mean, and that's really archetypal in the English acoustics uh, 21C amplifier, which is a, basically a reworking of the old Leak Stereo 20. And I had one years and years ago, um, but I would, wouldn't have dreamed of sort of putting it on display. Anyway, I digress. Back to this. I want to put the challenge out to my own team and to designers everywhere to see if you could work on the buffers for the Purify and get something that will really, really make this thing sound amazing. Because what we love about our Sugdens and our Pass Labs and our Musical Fidelities actually, I believe, isn't perfection. It's not technically correct. It's a sound, some would call it distortion or coloration that we like, something that makes it feel good, makes it ah, just nice and pleasant, relaxing to listen to. And I think this has obviously got to be possible here. So in the meantime, I can highly, highly recommend if you're looking for an amplifier, if you, you can even build them yourself because you can actually buy kits of these and just assemble them yourselves. You don't have to be an electronics expert. But I would suggest that you reach out to a company like VTV and Warren and discuss what you're looking for. And he will advise what would be best for you because really value for money, these things, are really, really outstanding. So I hope you found that interesting. And until the next time, enjoy your music.